Is this not even on this planet? 30 minutes. I'm thinking we have to go out and around. Yeah, for sure. It was somewhere else. Uh, you think we're gearing up for another Boba Fett appearance in Outlaws? Um, I mean, possibly. Given that he was in Survivor, yeah. That was a nice bonus to see him in, in Survivor. The way that sequence plays out too when you first meet him is pretty cool. What's up, Kyle Talks? All right, this is the actual monument, it looks like. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Hello. I was not expecting that. Traveler anomaly confirmed. Breach, breach, breach. I approached the portal. I think of every passing thought and idle wish that led me to this moment. Within this gateway, I might find Artemis, and I might find the source of the Sentinels, but I also might find a whole new universe. But it's more than this. This is not fate. I am making a choice, a leap of faith, that somewhere out there in the dark, I will find who I'm meant to be. All right, let's put the glyphs in. I step forward not knowing what I will find on the other side, but I feel it deep in my heart, the call towards a deeper truth. This will be the start of everything. Oh, I'm getting pulled in. Ah! Wormhole, Stargate. That was a really cool wormhole, like Stargate wormhole, guys. Here we go. Oh! I feel tingly all over. That doesn't sound good. Holy shit, where am I now? This looks completely different. That's not good. Quick. Oh no, it's closed. Oh, and there's an alarm going off. That is not good. Oh man, and I don't have my ship or anything. Atlas Protocol initiated 1616. 16. These are the numbers that we saw. Oh, I'm so screwed. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, what the fuck is happening? I've been summoned, oh snap. Oh, wow, we're finally getting some story drops today, everybody. Oh, man. What is that? You have learned the Atlas word for Atlas. Oh, a big pulsing AI. Warp cell. Cell times two. That thing does not look friendly. The text blinks before me. It awaits input. Say hello. 
Hello, world. An audio recording plays, echoing out across the vast interface. We were once travelers. We once aspired to more than dirt and dust. The audio clicks. Time passes. Show me a world, Atlas. Show me something no one has ever seen before. The voice ends. The interface grows still and silent. It awaits a command. Let's perform a diagnostic. It has been a shitload of years since the last diagnostic. 64% of worlds operating within expected parameters. 2 million actionable observations awaiting analysis. Subroutine sentinel status error. Subroutine glass status operational. 4,182 breach attempts. Subroutine traveler status operational. 458 critical error warnings. Exo mine structural integrity compromise. Immediate repairs required. Shape personality interface? Sure. Traveler. Reality fades. Everything fades. My body, my voice, my soul, all of it speaks to me. The Atlas stands before me in all its might. I want to ask about Artemis, and I want to find them. Something is happening to me. I need to get out of here. I need to... Let's scream. I try to scream, but I have no mouth, no form. Matrix style! Oh, I'm being booted out. Intruder! Rejected! Oh, I have a great comment off of YouTube I'm going to read here in a minute. Cucum, first contact. Did I just uncover a brand new atmosphere, a brand new place? Oh, I don't even know what kind of planet this is. So I've been booted out somewhere. I need to locate and board my ship. Oh, I'm hearing voices, man. My ship is a ways away. It's not horribly far. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Why can't I mark my ship? Alright, we're just gonna boogie right now. I am first contact on wherever it is that I'm at. Oh, look at the sky here. Is this going to be a place I might... I don't know. It's, it, it looks a little too desolate to want to build on. But it's the fact that I'm first contact. Once I get to my ship, the safety of my ship, we'll dive into that comment on my phone. Oh, there's even a cave right behind my ship. Alright, hold up. We've got... Something here. We've got all sorts of stuff. Let's check this out. This is one of those... Oh, 
odds. Scenario, deleted, boundary separation, failure likely, vessel 16 emptied, cause, sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer, analysis, fresh generation generate, anomaly containment prepared, let's broadcast. Traveler or anomaly detected, anomaly is compliant, position logged, system integrity scan initialized. Launch thrusters are critically damaged, and I'm going to have to um, fix them. I escaped to my ship, glad of something familiar in this strange world. Where has the portal taken me? I was caught in the gravity of that infernal machine, not strong enough to resist. It identified itself as Atlas, the entity so many worship and fear. I saw no sign of Artemis, no sign of the Sentinels. Why did I even step into that gateway? Why did I follow this path? Uh... To rescue Artemis. Is that true, or is it just a lie I tell myself? Artemis is in need of assistance, but did I really risk my life just for them? There's something more, something else, another yearning. As I stare at the console, an opportunity presents itself once more. There's an inbound transmission emerging from a location on this very planet. You are not alone. Huh, could it be them? Did Artemis meet the Atlas as I have? Alright. Well, we have some stuff to do here. But I do want to answer this... I want to answer this comment over on uh, YouTube. Because it's the perfect example of what we were talking about earlier. About the perceptions that people bring with them to the conversation. Um, and this is in regards to Star Wars Outlaws. Because we did uh, the reaction video today. Star Wars Outlaws feels like Red Dead Redemption in space. This is a fun one for me because I actually did this a couple of weeks ago. Star Wars looks like my Red Dead Redemption 2 in space. And then Games Radar just published an article, or a video I should say, with an interview that talks about how they also feel like it's going to be like Red Dead Redemption. So um, did all of that and... Um, Forzone, yeah, just wrote this comment on on the video and said, I just saw another video of another YouTuber who is at the previews of the game. And he said he was going through a rough day, but this game lifted his spirits. And that video alone is all I needed to hear, and it's enough to sell me on this game. I'm tired of the hate. I'm tired of the controversy. I want to play the game. Let the game play... Uh, let's play the game first and then talk about the game um, which is a great point to have then underneath that comment for those of you who want to go read or those of you who might want to respond to this comment to those of you who actually want to have a conversation with people about stuff like this um, uh, and then hang on I'm getting I was reading something. Hang on. So, MetalVox89 responded and said, agreed. He says, I just watched a video where a guy said, when I think of Star Wars and open world in the same sentence, I expect space travel. The, the writer of this comment said, I laughed at that because I felt like we were having the conversation around Starfield all over again, only this time with Star Wars Outlaws. While Starfield presented itself as a space game, it never presented itself and never claimed to be a space simulator. It was always designed as and promoted as a space RPG. It was, in other words, it was people who took it upon themselves to believe that Starfield was going to be a space simulator. It was never promoted as such. This person goes on to write, I understand some of the frustrations that people have had, but the game was basically what I expected, minus all the menu navigation. I think a lot of us have, you know, legitimate criticisms about too many menus in Starfield. Goes on to write, when you watch Star Wars, you do see space battles and space travel, but most of the times the story is taking place inside of a ship and mostly on planets. Very good point. It says, while I was indifferent about this game initially, I have now been coming, become increasingly more interested in it based upon the footage that they've been seeing. This is a great comment because it points to the exact thing we were just talking about regarding 
Starfield earlier in the in the stream today, which is people who choose to interpret what they want. We were talking about the space travel, and this is this is what this commenter is referring to as well, because um, that's one of the points I brought up in that video is how many, how a lot of people were, you know, thought they were going to get open ended because they thought they were getting a space simulator, and at no point in time has Star Wars Outlaws ever been promoted as a space simulator. It's never been promoted as a space sim. It's been promoted as the first open world Star Wars RPG. That's it. That's the tagline. Open world Star Wars RPG. Not open world Star Wars space sim. Not open world Star Wars space exploration sim. Not Star Wars base building sim. Star Wars open world RPG. So it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. Um... Dennis says we're having a human experience in gaming technology medium. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Turbo Tommy says what's more space than actually try to replicate space? You're pl you want a space game? You're playing a space game. Uh, Tim Horn says my first space game was Wing Commander on the Super Nintendo and the original PlayStation and Star Lancer. Man, I have fond memories of like specifically Wing Commander 3 and Wing Commander 4. Um because of the fact that they were doing such revolutionary stuff with with real actors in a digital space like using green screens and everything back in the day and the cast was amazing Malcolm McDowell, Mark Hamill um, Jonathan Rhys Davies uh, I can't even remember all the people that were in Wing Commander 3 and then 4 and then when I went to Freelancer later you know Freelancer was going back to you know no voiceovers no actors just text but really a super deep rich system of space exploration and being a freelancer in space with the ship um, those are great games um, anyway um, I thought that comment was really interesting to read through because I felt it was relevant to the conversation we were having earlier about um, about how way too many people looked at Starfield and they made up in their mind what they thought it was going to be and we see the same thing happening with Star Wars Outlaws well, just a whole bunch of people were out there thinking that they were getting Star Wars the space sim and they kind of forgot that it's never been promoted as a space sim it's always been promoted as an open world RPG first and foremost um, fascinating the way people perceive things and it is all about perception. There is no manipulation going on. There's no a company promising something and then taking it away or not delivering it, which definitely happened with this game to a small degree in the beginning as well because you had a lot of people who looked at No Man's Sky and they listened to the things that were being said during interviews and they kind of blew a whole bunch of stuff completely out of proportion. Um, and then when No Man's Sky launched, they were like, you lied. You promised. I remember. I remember when this game launched. Someone actually tried. I want to say it was in the UK. Someone tried to launch a false advertising suit against Hello Games because they claimed that Hello Games promised all these features during their discussions leading up to the game's launch, and then those features were not in the game when the game launched. And it's like, so we're not allowed. You know, as a game dev, I could say, so we're not allowed to talk about our vision for the game. Like, if I'm talking about the vision for the game, it doesn't necessarily mean all of those things are going to be in the game at the launch. I'm talking about the big picture, the 10-year plan. But the problem is if you don't specifically state that you're talking about the 10-year plan, people will read into that and they'll think that you're promising a launch feature, which is a super tricky thing to navigate when you're in game dev. Um, so I feel for, I feel for people or in the game development side of things because sometimes customers have unrealistic unrealistic expectations. All right, Starship is critically damaged, repairs advised. Uh, we need to first and foremost... this dehydrogen jelly P 
pure ferrite. I think we need 50. Starship received mysterious signal echo. Look at the source of the mysterious distress signal. Somewhere over here. What is this over here? Got over here, dude. I love the chair. Radiation protection falling. Like somebody's little front porch out here, man. Sit out, drink some beers, watch the sun go down on an alien planet. This is the Corvax transmission tower. Encrypted navigation data? I'll take that. Operation Turbo is even automated plea for help. White noise hissing from the stream. Uh. Okay, I've never done one of those before. Distress signal discovered. Abandoned starship available to claim and repair. I've never done that before. I've never tried to go find a ship to repair it. We're totally gonna get sidetracked right now, everybody. Did that log? So I can track that as like my primary. I don't see it tracked as an actual mission. Hold to tag. Oh, we need to go out. We need to go up in the Atmo.
Please be a cool looking ship. Threat detected. Is that pirates? How far away are they? Arrive in. Uh, that's not where I'm going, though. It's he's 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 a, he's a ways away. Right? Yeah, they're somewhere different and distant. This is some sort of a broken down ship that I can potentially repair. I've never I, I don't know if I I don't know if I've I don't know if I have the parts to do this, but let's at the very least I can go scope this out. Hologram appears before me. The lights in the mask it wears seem wide and dim. The calmly, pilot calmly reports news of its imminent demise. Search for functional technology. I can now construct one of these things. Okay. So, Kuwani is inspiring lost work. Hold RT to analyze target. It's not working. So, how do I see what's damaged here? It's a Class B ship. I would need to repair its pulse engines and its launch thrusters, right? But it's got all sorts of things that could be repaired. Uh, Duminal says you can repair boosters and thrusters to get it off the ground. What happens if I take off in this? What happens to my existing ship? Does it automatically return back to my freighter? How does that work? <laughs> 